Hello friends, welcome to GT Science Tutorial. In this video, we are going to understand about the osmotic pressure. In my previous videos, I have already explained about the osmosis phenomenon and the experiments that can be done to prove the osmosis phenomenon. And today, we are going to see some of the approaches by which we can understand about the osmotic pressure properly and we will see four different uh, definitions of osmotic pressure as well. So, let's start. Before understanding about osmotic pressure, we must have the knowledge about the osmosis process. Osmosis is the process in which the solvent molecules from the dilute solution passes through the semi-permeable membrane to the concentrated solution. In dilute solution, there is less amount of solute and in concentrated solution, there is more amount of solute. Then obviously, the solvent molecule will pass from that, sol uh, that solution in which there is more solvent to that solution where there is less solvent, right? So, let me write the definition of osmosis process, okay. Osmosis, osmosis is a process in which, in which the solvent molecules, in which the solvent molecules from dilute solution, from dilute solution passes to the concentrated solution through a semi permeable membrane semi permeable membrane here the meaning of semi permeable membrane is a kind of barrier that allows only the solvent molecules to pass through it and not the solute molecules if you don't know what a membrane and its types are you can check the link in the description below i'll put the link of my uh, that topics video in the description so this is the definition of the osmosis process let's try to understand this with a diagram suppose we have a thistle funnel like this this is a thistle funnel we can do this experiment in laboratory as well and we cover its open mouth with some semi permeable membrane this is a semi permeable membrane this is a thistle funnel thistle funnel and suppose we keep uh, we put dilute sorry sugar solution or salt solution in it okay sugar solution so we put sugar solution in it now we place this thistle funnel into a beaker that contains distilled water that contains distilled water initially the level of this sugar solution was till here okay till here this is the sugar solution right and this is the distilled water then what will happen because of the osmosis uh, the solvent should pass from that region where there is more solvent to that region where there is less solvent or simply from the dilute solution to the concentrated solution so this is di distilled water right distilled water that means it does not have any solute in it so obviously this is the dilute solution and this will behave as the concentrated solution for this case then what will happen water molecules will start to come inside and that will get inside through the semi permeable membrane and as a result of that the so level of the solution keeps on increasing it will keep on increasing and increasing and increasing and increasing and increasing it will keep on increasing and see this was the uh, distilled water level now the sugar solution level even reaches above it above it and it, it stops somewhere at point b suppose this is point b it was initially at point a and now it reached to point b this is what happens in osmosis now as we see over here there is this is the water level this is the water level that is distilled water level and this is somehow connected to this water level as well right this solution is connected to this water level then obviously this should be same then as the liquid layer at the liquid level is up then a kind of force that is hydrostatic force is applied over there as a result of that there is the generation of hydrostatic pressure that pressure will try to push this solution 
downwards. There is the creation of hydrostatic pressure that pushes the water level downward. Hydrostatic pressure is the pressure uh, on the liquid due to its height. Now look at here, this level should be over here. So this is the h that is the depth or height of the liquid column till here from here to here right this is represented by h the uh, density of this is rho and there will be obviously gravitational influence so acceleration due to gravity is rho so we can consider hydrostatic pressure hydrostatic pressure that is p is given by h rho g this is the formula of the hydrostatic pressure that acts on this much of liquid. Now this hydrostatic pressure will try to push it downward and osmosis will push it upward. Both the process are happening over here, right? At a particular time, at a certain time, both the process will be equal, okay? That there will be an equilibrium condition in which this osmosis phenomenon actually stops because of this hydrostatic pressure at that point we can say that the hydrostatic pressure and the osmotic pressure are equal right so it is the pressure that is sufficient enough or minimum amount of pressure that is sufficient to stop the osmosis from happening is called the osmotic pressure we can say that because the hydrostatic pressure is actually the reason to stop the osmosis phenomenon right so this will be equal to the osmotic pressure let me write it over here this is the first definition of the osmotic pressure the hydrostatic pressure the hydrostatic pressure the hydrostatic pressure generated generated on the solution generated on the solution that is that is sufficient that is sufficient enough to to stop the flow to stop the flow of solvent from from dilute to concentrated solution is called osmotic pressure is called osmotic pressure so at equilibrium we can say that hydrostatic pressure hydrostatic pressure is actually equal to the osmotic pressure so i hope you understood what osmotic pressure actually is by this approach now there are different other approach by which we can understand uh, osmotic pressure as well let's see another approach that will uh, even that will make even make it even clear to understand about the osmotic pressure for, for that let me read this portion we understood about osmotic pressure in the context of hydrostatic pressure now to understand about the osmotic pressure in another way let us consider there is a pot like this okay let us consider a bigger one there is a pot like this and this pot is provided with a semi permeable membrane like this this part is made up of semi permeable membrane that is the solvent molecules can pass through it now let us put salt solution or sugar solution in it this is the salt solution we can put any solution over here we can even put glucose solution over here now we need to keep this whole pot in a huge beaker that contains <coughs> that contains distilled water as we are talking about osmotic pressure we must consider a solvent over here right that is pure solvent there should not be any solute right so this is the pot that is provided with a semi permeable membrane this is the semi permeable membrane and this is the beaker and this one this is the dilute sorry this is the distilled water distilled water now what will happen uh, from here from the uh, dilute solution that is from the solvent distilled water will start to go inside and as a result of that the level of okay suppose initially the level was still here okay now the level will the water level sorry the solution level will start to rise and to prevent that we need to put a piston over here we need to put a piston over here to see it moving 
and when it starts to move up we need to put little amount of weight over here are you getting me as the uh, distilled water gets inside then water level obviously rises to stop that we need to put some weight over here now more and more water will get in through this semi permeable membrane and it will try to push that little weight as well so we need to increase more weight more weight we need to keep doing this till it stops to go up it does not try to go up as the water keeps on increasing over here this will try to go up now we are increasing the weight at a point this phenomenon will stop the piston will not try to move any further now at that point whatever is the weight over here that provides some pressure on it that external pressure becomes equal to the osmotic pressure so always understand osmotic pressure means that pressure that is enough that is sufficient to stop the osmosis phenomenon the minimum amount of pressure that is enough to or that can stop the osmosis from happening is called the osmotic pressure so by this way what can we conclude the uh, osmotic pressure the osmotic pressure can be can be defined as can be defined as the external pressure can be defined as the external pressure applied external pressure applied on the solution as we are applying the external pressure on the solution to stop to stop the to stop the water from entering entering into solvent sorry into solution that is osmosis right that is osmosis or you can simply say to stop the osmosis is called can be okay we just need to write it over here so see the osmotic pressure can be defined as the external pressure that we are applying by increasing the weight over there applied on the solution to stop the osmosis phenomenon as soon as the osmosis phenomenon stop that whatever pressure we are applying from over here that is equal to the osmotic pressure so i hope you understood what osmotic pressure in this way as well now for another way look at here suppose we consider a case like this and we put two beakers this is first beaker and this is second beaker over here in both of them in both of them equal volume of liquid is kept but among one of them this is the solvent and this one is the solution but their volume should be same okay this is a must their volume should be same solvent means this is less concentrated solution means this is more concentrated there might be any any things at the solute salt sugar glucose anything okay and we need to keep a lid over here like this we are understanding the third approach okay we need to keep a lid over here that stops the uh, vapor from passing out now we need to maintain a constant temperature we need to maintain a constant temperature at that point dt becomes zero right now we just have to keep it for some days it takes some days for this process to happen okay now after some days if we notice it then we observe some strange thing the water level of the solvent actually decreases and the level of the solution increases the solution will be till over here initially we took the same volume now the volume will be different why does that happen how is it possible so we know that as in the solvent there is no solute then it will make more vapor right and as non volatile solute is kept in the solution then it will make only less vapor as a result of that more vapor will dominate over this less vapor and they will go this side and they will get condensed over here they will get condensed over here and as a result of that they will get mixed over here and because the temperature is not changing they will again try to convert into the vapor now as the volume of the liquids become different then obviously 
uh, that liquid which has more volume will form more vapor and the liquid that has less volume will form less vapor and as a result of that at a point the vapor pressure of solvent and solution will become equal and that pressure that pressure is called the osmotic pressure the pressure decreased by the solvent the solvent obviously has to decrease its vapor pressure or the solution has to increase its vapor pressure in order to make their vapor pressure equal right that decreased vapor pressure by solvent or increased vapor pressure by the solution to make their vapor pressure equal is called the osmotic process okay let me write the definition the decreased the decreased vapor pressure of solvent solvent or increased increased vapor pressure of solute solute sorry solution solution to make the vapor pressure of solute and solvent solute and solvent same is called is called <coughs> osmotic pressure now we might be thinking that you might be thinking that where is the semi permeable membrane as osmosis is happening over here then there must be a semi permeable membrane in this case there is no physical semi permeable membrane but this solution air interface this air behaves as the semi permeable membrane here here solution solution air interface interface acts as semi permeable membrane semi permeable membrane so this was the third approach to understand about the osmotic pressure so it is very simple right osmotic pressure is just the pressure that is the minimum amount of pressure required to stop the osmosis from happening we can understand it by different way there is one more very important way to understand about the osmotic pressure that is in terms of chemical potential of the solution let's understand that for that let me read this portion okay till now we must have understood what osmotic pressure actually is we have seen three different definition of osmotic pressure with three different context now the fourth one is very important for examination because we are going to understand about the osmotic pressure with the help of the chemical potential of solute and solvent in thermodynamics chemical potential has a specific meaning chemical potential of any species is the energy released or gained by that species with the changing number of itself and there is a formula that relates the chemical potential of the solvent and solution let me write that the formula that formula is mu solution this mu means chemical potential is equal to mu naught plus rt ln chai where where this mu solution is the chemical potential chemical potential of solution mu naught is the chemical potential of pure solvent or solvent we can write r is the universal gas constant universal gas constant t is the temperature in kelvin scale and finally this psi is the mole fraction mole fraction of solvent mole fraction of the solvent so these are the meaning of these symbols used in this particular formula now from this formula what we can see this mole fraction of the solvent will obviously be less than 1 right since mole fraction of the solvent will be less than 1 then obviously ln uh, chai will be a negative value right will be a negative value and as a result of that this sign becomes negative so it will be mu solution is equal to mu naught minus rt ln chai right now what can we understand by seeing this equation the value of mu naught is more than that of the mu naught solution by rt ln chai here we can conclude that the value of mu naught is more than 
more than mu naught solution by R T L and psi, right? R T L and psi. That means the chemical potential of the solvent is more. Let me write it. Chemical potential of solvent is more than that of solution. So, as the chemical potential of the solvent is more, then obviously liquid will flow from the solvent to the solution because liquid always flows from the solvent, sorry, from the region of higher chemical potential to the region of lower chemical potential. So, in this case also we understood one thing, the uh, liquid will flow from the solvent to the solution and we proved it mathematically, we saw it mathematically as well, right. Now, as, as the liquid start to flow from the solvent with higher chemical potential to the solution with lower chemical potential, I have made a down, downward arrow to show higher chemical potential and lower chemical potential. Now see, chemical potential is directly proportional to the pressure. As the pressure of this solution is increased, the chemical potential will also increase. Then we just have to increase its pressure so that the chemical potential of this will also increase, okay, will also increase. And there will be a time when the chemical potential of both solvent and solution becomes equal at that point the liquid from the sorry the solvent will not flow to the solution and that is equal to the osmotic pressure let me write it over here the pressure the pressure increased increased by solution the pressure increased by solution so that so that the chemical so that the chemical potential chemical potential of solution becomes becomes equal to that of solute sorry to that of solvent is called osmotic pressure osmotic pressure so this is the definition of the osmotic pressure in this in this context so there are different ways to define osmotic pressure there are different ways to understand about the osmotic pressure you can write any definition in examination if it asks about the definition of osmotic pressure you can use any of the four uh, definition of osmotic pressure that we understood today so at last we can only say osmotic pressure is the minimum amount of pressure that is required to the stop the osmosis from happening right that is the meaning of osmotic pressure so i hope you understood everything about the osmotic pressure so understand uh, learn all the four different approaches and four different definition of osmotic pressure so that it will be easier for you to write in examination if it asks in long question so that's all in this video if you like the video please share this video as much as you can and thank you for watching the video